So once you find that uh, you have a case of, uh, of plagiarism, sometimes you have to proceed very carefully. There could be cases it's a useful educational tool because it could be just sloppy citing. Somebody's copied something, they haven't put quote marks around it. So it could be, okay, you need to, it's an educational experience to, to teach about proper citation. It could be just a mistake, uh, or it could be something that's uh, much, much more serious. So the, um, uh, there are a number of resources that we point publishers to. In the US, there's the Office of Research Integrity that investigates these things. And actually, one of the most useful services is the um, uh, Committee on Publication Ethics. This is an organization that was formed by some medical journals, The Lancet uh, and the British Medical Journal uh, in the UK, but they now are trying to create an international organization. It's at publicationethics.org. They have a lot of really useful information about how to deal with plagiarism and advice. And, and members of COPE, C-O-P-E, is, is how it's referred to, um, uh, actually can submit cases for advice. And they have a committee that will then review the case and provide advice. Because you start to get into some very tricky areas that if you contact uh, an author's institution, it could lead to them you know, losing their job and their careers being ruined and uh, legal matters could come up. So. You have to be very careful about how to proceed. Crosscheck doesn't actually extend to that. It's really just a tool for discovering that there might be a problem. But it's up to the publishers to have the process in place. Uh, the, the, the other group is uh, the Council of Science Editors as well, which is a useful organization that has editorial po policies uh, in, in place. Mm -hmm. uh, Nos tenemos apenas 15 minutos, más 5 minutos para preguntas y después entramos en otro asunto. ¿No? ¿Ok? So, eh, eh, porque él dividió la palestra, hago la segunda palestra en dos partes y ahora sería el momento, con el tiempo que tenemos, para ir a responder preguntas sobre el cross-check. ¿Ok? ¿Sí? Podemos pensar en ese momento alguna pregunta que pueda ser pasada para él sobre el cross-check. Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Qué personas quieren saber? ¿Es ok para ti? Sí, eso es bien. Vamos, por favor, a oír las preguntas de las personas que quisieran saber más sobre el cross-check, aprovechar la presencia de Edge, por favor. Pasen su pregunta en portugués, ¿sí? Que será traducida para él. Sí, hay una pregunta aquí. ¿Es cross-check identificar plagiarios en otras lenguas? Yes, so... Si el cross-red identifica plagio en otros idiomas. Yes, the Authenticate system can deal with all the Western languages, you know, all the Latin languages, and what it doesn't handle at the moment is Japanese and Korean and Chinese. But uh, but uh, we're I investigating that with with that paradox. So. Professora, Rosália, tem uma pergunta também? Eu não, eu não sei se ficou clara a pergunta, porque eu perguntei se ele identifica a plágio em tradução, ou seja, ah. está escrito em inglês, a pessoa traduz sem citar, e isso é plágio, mas de um idioma ah. para o outro. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, fairly easy to uh, kind of pull the system. If you run it through a translation and then translate it back, it probably wouldn't pick that up.
Uh, when, uh, aquí tengo una pregunta sobre portales. Entonces, él, él dice que si las universidades que coordenan los portales de revistas tienen una única seña ¿sí? y los editores no tienen acceso a ella, ¿cómo va a ser para ellos usar el cross-check? Cuando uh, ellos usan uh, un uh, one, uh, one, one login en un um, portal, ¿cómo uh, los diferentes editores pueden hacer un cross-check? Ok. So, um, when uh, a journal signs up for cross-check, they can uh, they get one main login for the system, but then they can create uh, sub accounts and uh, and give the give the uh, logins to to editors to use. So, the, but it's still linked to. The, the, the main account, so it can be tracked uh, how much they're using it. Um, and I, I didn't mention that um, a, a few aspects of, of, of cross-check. One is that there's an uh, extra annual fee uh, to join, so it's, so it's 20% of the annual membership fee. Uh, and then organizations pay a fee to buy paradigms for each document, each manuscript that they check. And that it starts at 75 US cents. Um, and, um, right, so, uh, but what we would like to do is, again, if we had a, a group arrangement here, we would have the same thing for, for cross-checking as well. Uh -oh. That was the other question we have here about the, uh, the small uh, editor, uh, more publisher. Mm -hmm. And then how much gonna cost for them to use the mm -hmm. cross check? Yeah. yeah. So it would be the uh, well, if if, if the uh, at two hundred and seventy-five dollars, the um, annual fee for cross check that is um, twenty-seven dollars plus <laughs> times two, so uh, fifty-four dollars per year extra. Uh, but and then depending on how many manuscripts you check in the system, then it's just as I said, 75 cents per per manuscript. Mas então isso fica incluído na anuidade ou não? It's included in the annuity. Uh, no, no, the, um, the the per manuscript fee is uh, separately paid to uh, iParadise. Uh, the so you can pay the annual fee and have all the content indexed, and then there's no manuscript fee to pay until you actually start checking checking manuscripts. So you can still get your content included, you know, without checking manuscripts uh, at the start. Uh, the, the other issue, which I may be a question on, is the. Um, because it, the full text gets indexed, Crossref created a uh, standard agreement uh, for publishers to sign with iParadigms. Since iParadigms indexed as the full text, the agreement is directly between the publisher and iParadigms. But it's an agreement that Crossref has negotiated, so each publisher doesn't need to develop their own separate agreement. So, uh, uh, but because the full text is indexed by them, the relationship has to be directly. Okay. Sí. No sé si fue claro para ustedes, lo que yo también entendí es que tenemos eh, una diferencia. O Crossref ofrece algunos servicios adicionados a un servicio de DOI, ¿ok? Mas no todos. Y el Crosscheck, él tiene parte integrada. Los servicios más otras tienen que ser direccionadas a la empresa que crió Crosscheck. ¿Ok? Esa es una diferencia ahí. Otra pregunta aquí es sobre la utilización de tecnologías de semántica y de, si, de, si es posible identificar el contenido de apenas eh, o apenas compara la secuencia de las palabras. Son de las semánticas. Uh, if the proceeding of the check uh, cross check is he usually divide contents by words or sequence of words, multiple. So sorry, the uh, sequence uh, of words. Is, is it able to find a sequence of words? Or, okay. Yeah. So the, the system uh, picks up the 
picks up uh, strings of text. So sort of about a sentence long, seven or eight words, some, something like that. So that, uh, but what it does is um, when the content is indexed, it's, it's, it's broken down into very, very small chunks. And the indexing is quite sophisticated for how it, how it does the text, text matching. Technical curiosity. Is it able to read the content? I mean, to make the relationship in the content? Or it just uh, can get the sequence of words? I mean, uh, if the sequence of words, are, if there are 10 words in sequence that are equal, it identifies as plagiarism. Or it's really reading the content. <laughs> It's um, it's not actually it's it's not reading the content. It's not semantic indexing. There there are other tools for text mining and semantic indexing. It's not doing that. Although we're looking at the possibility of adding that, but it's it's really just. But it, it does have some algorithms for weighting how often the words occur and those types of things. But but it's very straightforward text matching, not concepts or anything. Okay. Bueno, eh, vamos a continuar entonces con la segunda parte, ¿sí? La cual se va a hablar sobre el uh, cross mark. Ah, okay. Entonces, por favor, eh, no so, yeah. <coughs> Estou utilizando o Crosscheck em teste, há praticamente oito meses ou nove meses. O resultado assim é excelente, tá? é mais do que nós imaginávamos. Mas é, é, lá na UEM, em Maringá, é, nós somos uma instituição de, de grande impacto em pesquisa, em desenvolvimento de novas tecnologias, patentes. E, então existe uma, uma, é, uma preocupação com relação ao conteúdo legal que vai ser depositado no, nos bancos de dados dos Identicate ou do Crosscheck. Esse conteúdo ele não pode, é, é, um, é um segredo institucional, um segredo de Estado, que vai ser depositado em uma empresa fora, antes dele ser publicado. Então, é, a gente tem toda essa preocupação legal não só nós, acho que vários ministérios, institutos de pesquisa no Brasil, que fazem pesquisa de conta, é, precisam estar identificando o, o, se tem plágio no, nos papers, tá, que vão, vão ser publicados, é, mas tem essa preocupação de, onde, de qual a integridade de que esses conteúdos não irão vazar né, para outros, sendo que é um segredo. Um segredo. Yeah, thank you. I mean, those are those are important points um, to mention, and I, I, th I think those are good points. The content is very secure; it's very restricted in what it can be used for, and uh, so the 151 publishers have felt comfortable that the agreement with our paradigms is strict enough that their content is protected and and very very secure. And one of the one of the things I always say is if um, Elsevier is willing to put their content in, then you know it must be pretty safe because they're incredibly uh, protective <laughs> of their their content. <laughs>